welcome back to another episode of Practical Nutrition. I'm Cassie. I'm Alex. And I'm Sarah. And we are so excited to talk about our topic today, which is body image. So, yes. yeah, good topic. <laughs> it is a great topic, and it's a. It, we're going to go over a lot of different things and a lot of things. Even if you um, feel like you have a pretty positive body image, just a few things to think about, and then um, and hopefully this topic will be helpful for you guys because I know this is something that I see every day working with clients, and you know, as a female as well, and human is something that we all. Um, um, struggle with a little bit. So uh, we'll start with what is body image when we're talking about body image. And it's really simply how you see yourself. Um, it's affected by memories, by generalizations, assumptions, and comparisons to standards that are set by society and culture. So in one society or one type of culture, there may be different standards and other types of cultures. Um, negative body image, which we'll talk about today, is something that where you may feel self-conscious or ashamed of your body compared to those standards that are set somewhere in your life experience. And those can be external from something outside of yourself, or they can also be internal. Um, so something that you set, a standard that you set yourself. And so a negative body image would be feelings because you feel like you aren't up to those standards. Positive body image, on the other hand, which is what we try to help promote, <laughs> and um, is a clear and accurate perception of your body and appearance, appearance and appreciating your body and understanding that your appearance does not reflect your character or worth. And so something is Say it louder, Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, your appearance does not reflect your character or worth. And so trying to focus on other things besides just what we look like. And again, a lot of that's dictated by so many different things. And I don't think that we often sit down and think about that. Like, where did these expectations come from? Why do we have these expectations? So we'll talk a little bit about that today. So some facts and statistics. Sarah, yes. can you go with those? You know how we do. We always throw some facts and statistics <laughs> at you. Um, so just real quick, a couple here. In 1997, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Resources reported that about 91% of women were unhappy with their bodies. However, only 5% of women naturally possess the body type often portrayed in the media. And that's something that we know, you know, having science backgrounds, genetics plays a huge role into these things. Um, so like one thing specifically that I talk about with some of my clients is having an android or an apple shape or a gynoid um, or more of a pear shaped type body. And that's, you know, through genetics, um, you know, people who do gymnastics don't necessarily possess the same body type as people who swim. And so understanding that there's differences is important. And so I think that's why um, this percentage is the way that it is, because a lot of people don't know that. Um, but of course, we'll talk about that more today. And another one, just like speed, athletic ability, IQ, or other genetic traits that can be improved, our body shape, ease of building muscle, and ability to burn or store fat is somewhat limited by those genetics that we just discussed. Um, so you can certainly significantly improve, improve on these, but that only takes you so far. And so being able to sit there with yourself and accept and own and love that body that you're sitting in and knowing that you can only achieve the best that you can achieve because genetics is a limiting factor is important. It is. I mean, it is important. And in 2016, a study conducted by Dove and over 10,000 females found that only 4% felt that they were beautiful. Yeah, that's so sad. That just it makes my so heart hard. hurt so yeah. much. Yeah. And, you know, we, we're talking about females, but then also men ex can experience this too. It's not just limited to females. But men also struggle with body dissatisfaction and negative body image. So they have the same potential effects from that negative body image that we were talking about. And we're going to go into body dysmorphic disorder, um, and this affects 1.7 to 2.9% of our population, which doesn't seem like very much, but that's about 1 in 50 people. And we've seen, I'm sure we've all seen this at least at some point in our careers as being dietitians. And we're going to shorten it to BDD. BDD is, a char is characterized by an excessive concern about one or more perceived defects in one's appearance in a way that negatively affects quality of life. So it's something that you're thinking about constantly that you can't get past, um, that affects your day-to-day -day life. It's something that you just can't stop thinking about. That's kind of what we're talking about with BDD. Um, with BD, thoughts about appearance may limit social activities, control of the majority of your daily thoughts, and contribute to depression. Um, so again, it's something that's just kind of taking over your life. 
dissatisfaction and preoccupation of one's body due to unrealistic expectations for perfection can hinder satisfaction and happiness with oneself. So that one thing can cause this whole array of problems. So having depression or not being able to go to wherever you want to go to because you're thinking about this one thing. That's what we're talking about with BDD. This is probably more common than is shown in research. Like that one in 50, um, it seems like it's not very many, but I think it is, like you said, is more common than what is shown in research. Um, so be careful with expectations and goals that you are setting for yourself. So who told you that you should look that way? Why is that realistic? for you. Um, be sure that when you're setting goals that it's something that it is realistic for you. Everybody has different small goals. So it's important to not look at somebody and be like, my goal is to look like that poor person because we're all different people. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. And it's always interesting because I ask my clients is why do you have this expectation? And a lot of people don't really know really why, yeah. you know, and, and also it's it really interesting to me how females, especially and males too, but, you know, don't really have a concept of what a healthy body looks like in real life. Right. you know, and where they fit with that. I think, you know, we see bodies all day long and, you know, that's part of our job. But a lot of people will ask me, you know, does my stomach, is this normal or is this typical or is this, you know? Yeah. And so I think a lot of people just because of a lot that we've been exposed to, you know, in our culture here in the United States, um, don't have no concept of what a real body looks like. That's so true. You know? And like people will come in and be like, I want to look like how I did in high school. Yeah. And I'm like, that may not be a realistic, <laughs> if, you know, that's 20 years yeah. ago. I don't think any of us are going to look the way we did yeah. in high school. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. So, so, yes. And we, you know, our business is called Achieving Your Best. And there's actually a reason that was well thought out. And there's a reason it says that because, you know, here just at our facility, we are constantly wanting people to think about themselves and being the best that they can be. And that may look different day to day that may look different year to year like you said Alex it, but it is always focused on your best not compared to other people whether that's your training or your fitness or what you look like or anything like that yeah and your best at that present time not your yes. best 20 years right. ago <laughs> yeah. times right. change and right. things happen yes so. exactly and yeah. you may have a crazy week you know uh, my husband loves when I say that because he's like you say that every week, um, <laughs> every week. So, crazy week. I'm like it's more crazy than usual <laughs> but um, you know but if you have an extra stressful week your you know your best may be different than it is whenever you have a week that everything goes smoothly mm -hmm. and so having some grace with yourself is really important so so we'll dive into this a little different and different a little deeper but um, one thing too with the the BDD um, that is an actual disorder that really affects your day-to-day -day life I think a lot of people are probably somewhere on the spectrum of of not being happy with their writing. So I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable, men and women, for example, like say you want your friends invite you to the lake and you maybe don't want to go because you don't want to get into a swimsuit in front of other people. And so um, those kinds of things can, you know, you may not have full blown BDD, but you might be limiting yourself because of those issues that you have so so just some things to think about um, I think a lot of people when they get to be 90s and 100 year old they don't go look back and say I wish I had not gone and gotten in a swimsuit in front of people I think they would say I wish I had gone and just been happy and enjoyed life and yeah. not cared so much Absolutely. you know yeah. so um, okay so let's talk about some potential causes of negative body image um, top the top and foremost one is that that we see as media and this is something um, again it's not a simple fix but um, but when you look at advertisements you look at commercials you look at written advertisements thinness in in women and muscularity in men is associated in those advertisements with success and happiness so they show happy people that are thin and fit and so automatically you're like I need to look like that in order to be happy and successful and so and that's something that you know you're constantly inundated with from a very young age. Also, fashion and models, they promote thinness and dictate which body type is popular or desirable at any given moment. And it's crazy when I looked back at some of the history of this, 
was, you know, way back in the Renaissance, for example, uh, you know, much bigger women were in style and that's what everyone tried to do. Mm -hmm. And then you go through in the twenties, a very straight, not curvy shape was in style and that's what everybody wanted. And then you go into where Marilyn Monroe and those, you know, and those kinds of, and very curvy was in style and everybody wanted to be that way. And so again, you know, uh, that is based on a certain body type that the media said, this is what the ideal person looks like. Um, and then you might have a bodybuilder that's popular or a movie star that's popular for a guy. Then everybody, all the guys think they want to look like that. And so, um, or an athlete, for example. And so, um, so just keeping that in perspective that the media is dictating that it's not really based in any reality that that's the healthy body type or a body type that's achievable for you. Um, also, many advertisements are trying to make people feel bad about themselves so they buy their product. <laughs> so, you know, so they're trying to go over the top and you have to remember that as well um, and keep that in perspective. Um, the other big one is that images are altered by filters or computers to portray aesthetic perfection. And, you know, that is something that obviously is not based in any type of reality. So, uh, you and most people know this by now, but we still see these pictures of this is what a woman's thigh looks like and you know and I remember a few I don't know when it was um, time's been so weird with COVID but maybe a year ago um, or two years ago Outdoor Voices put an ad out for shorts and the a model a fitness model who was very fit was standing there and you could see a little bit of cellulite on her thigh and they don't use any kind of computer fixing for their for their models or pictures and so I was so excited about that <laughs> so I posted about it things. yeah <laughs> because it's like this is what we need to see is are real people and real bodies and we and the good news is I think the media is starting to get some of that and they're doing much better than when I grew up in the 80s and 90s <laughs> so um, so um, also you know desire to look like those celebrities and role models who are genetically different than us um, so we look at them as something that we want to try to achieve and then you have the influencers now and that's something that we didn't have when I was younger because um, we didn't have social media but you have those people saying if you just do what I do if you just eat what but I, you'll look like me. And that may not be the case at all. And that typically isn't. Uh, and then body shaming, over-focusing on appearance. So this is another thing I see all the time where you have maybe a news anchor or you have someone that's talking about a topic and all everyone's talking about is what they look like. <laughs> and so, which is extremely frustrating. Um, or you have celebrities and they've really worked, you know, for months or years or whatever on this big project and all people talk about is how thin they are or how fit they are or, you know, whatever, what their dress looks like. And so we're constantly inundated by that appearance, um, those kinds of things um, with media. And then also peers and family can be an issue. Um, constant negative comments about our bodies to each other. Um, that's something that I see all the time. I think, um, you know, men, maybe not as much as women, but we are, you know, it's, we love to talk bad about our bodies. And I don't know um, where, where that starts, <laughs> really, but it's something that, that we I hear all the time. Um, so, and it's something that we try to definitely get people out of the habit and then verbal shaming um, you people in school or people at work may shame other people because of their appearance um, and then again people setting up expectations you may you may look at and I've been in a class before where there was an instructor that was extremely fit and she looked great and she was up on stage and said how she was so unhappy with her stomach and you know that was a situation then I could just feel everyone around me like, well, if she thinks her stomach looks that bad, then I, she must think I look really bad, you know? And so negative comments like that you might get from other people um, as well. Yeah. So, and I know people even on social media that they get to that point, they have the six pack, they, they're like, I've made it basically, but then they're still unhappy when they get to that point. And sometimes they do it through doing like very like fad diets and unrealistic ways to get there. And then they're just unhappy overall. Or they're like 5% body fat and not eating anything. And not having a cycle and those types <laughs> yeah. of things. Yeah. So if, even if you see those people, sometimes they're 
also unhappy, even if they are the ideal image that the, that social media is portraying. Yeah. yeah. And it's just not reality right. because you don't know what their life is like, what they've given up, what, you know, um, you know, all of those things. You just don't really know what their situation is. We just see these glimpses of it. So, um, yes. So those are some potential causes. Now let's talk a little bit about potential risks with Sarah. Right. Negative body image. And this is where our intervention kind of comes into because we love to work with clients to help improve their body image we're trained on that we want to see you guys achieve you know your best like we talked about before and understanding what these risks how they show themselves in you it's going to be different for everyone but these are just a few things um, that we typically see or that you know what research shows typically happen so first and foremost you're at an increased risk for having a low self-esteem unhappiness depression and mental disorders and that plays a huge role in what it means to encompass having a healthy lifestyle it's really hard to do that when you're um, in that mindset you have a low self-esteem you're unhappy and you know everything that I just listed um, next promotion of focusing on something we cannot change or that is unrealistic to achieve and therefore you're gonna be wasting moments of your life obsessing over something that won't happen and we see that and that's real and I would almost put the word normal on that because yeah. of <laughs> how society and media is and I think that just like those statistics showed us the majority of men and women go through stuff like that and so understanding and recognizing that that's happening is the first step in the right direction uh, next is more, um, you know, where we come in and clinically where people seek help. And that's when you're in the, in the stage of eating disorders, whether you're in the beginning stages or you're going through it, you've been in that, in that process for five years or so. And so anorexia nervosa is one of the eating disorders, um, which is an obsessive desire to lose weight by not eating. There's also bulimia, which is categorized as an obsessive desire to lose weight characterized by overeating, followed by vomiting, laxatives, or fasting. And then orthorexia is kind of newish in comparison to anorexia nervosa and bulimia. And this is just an unhealthy obsession with eating healthy. And I've even seen some um, either like nutrition students or dietitians that have come forth with like big social media followings that have said, hey, I think that I figure out that I had orthorexia because yes, it's important to eat healthy, but when it really interferes with your day-to-day -day life, that's an unhealthy habit to have. And so that's real as well. Um, disordered eating is kind of a step down from that. Um, so that would be maybe those beginning stages of being diagnosed with an eating disorder. Um, so we would call that not a full-blown eating disorder, but tendencies related to food that are not healthy or a chronic diet mentality. And if you have questions on diet mentality, we do have a podcast all about that. I think it was called Why You Should Never Eat a Cheat Meal. Um, so if you want more information, dive into that podcast. <laughs> However, um, having that diet mentality is that you're always you know going to be on a diet you're always restricting and you're never happy or satisfied and then last one um, that I'll talk about is a lack of valuing what is really important about people what's inside versus what's outside and I know I talk about this a lot with my clients because oftentimes they'll come in with what we call extrinsic motivation factors which is I want to have six-pack abs like so-and-so on social media or you know I want to be this specific weight that would be an extrinsic motivation factor which is research does not show is associated with long-term sustainability and actually meeting those goals where as intrinsic motivation factors is what we like to focus on. That would be having the energy to play with your kids, um, not being hospitalized when you're older so you can see your grandkids grow up and your kids get married and all of those things. Um, so we like to talk about all of those things with our clients because it's important and it helps you get out of that poor mentality that puts you at risk for all of that disordered eating and eating disorders and all of that stuff. Yeah. Like finding your motivation, finding your why. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know. Right. And it, making sure it's a, a why that is helpful. Yes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So that, and we can help with that. That's what, that's what we do every day with people. Um, so to help people think about it differently. So, so what can we do? What can we do? <laughs> oh my so gosh. What are recommendations with this. Good oh, get question. So. Support the use of models and advertisements portraying real people, people that aren't altered, people that have the cellulite, normal, just regular things that you see women and you're like, they're beautiful, they're healthy, um, not people that have all the fake stuff done to them or that have been computerized and all that stuff. Um, they include all different shapes, sizes, ages, races, 
We're all about inclusiveness and making sure that we see real people, real men, real women in advertisements. And people that do a great job of that marketing campaigns include Airy, Dove, Outdoor Voices, Old Navy, Target, and those, I mean, Swimsuits for All, Girlfriend Collective. There's a ton more out there. It's becoming more popular, yep. which is super exciting. And I also know of models that are refuse to be altered in any way by their pictures and they're saying I don't want to be altered so I think that's pretty cool too from the flip side and then keep what you can realistically achieve in perspective everyone is different and that is such a good thing if we were all the same what would life be <laughs> you know, boring. Like, it would be boring. so boring yeah. <laughs> um, everybody's completely different your body will never look the same as somebody else's we could all eat the same exact thing do the same exact workout and we will not look the same so it's important to keep that into perspective and set goals for yourself that are healthy and that you feel like you can achieve um, we want you to focus on you and what you can do each day to be healthy and feel good about yourself control what you can control eating exercise getting good sleep stress management also being social hanging out with your family all that kind of stuff not in COVID times wear your mask if you need to <laughs> but all that stuff is super important um, and then Whenever you are focusing on you, do what you can each day. And if you have a goal to look like someone else, is that really the best goal for you? Is that truly your best? So if your goal is to look like somebody on social media, is that a good use of your time and how you want to portray yourself as being healthy? Yeah. Great. So yeah, yeah, so it's it just you need to think about yourself and what you can do each day. And we, you know, one thing we try to do as well with, as dietitians is, you know, we have a lot of people that have these, you know, their goal is to get to a certain body fat percent or whatever. And we talk about those goals, you know, just to have data um, to see how they're doing. But really, we like for people to focus focus on the habits that will get them closer to that. Because if you, you know, you can get to a certain size or you can get to a certain weight in tons of different ways. But if you are doing it just for, to get to that size, then what are you going to do, you know, when you get there? Or is that even a realistic goal? So you're going to go through your whole life chasing after something you can't even do. And so, um, so really be careful with your goals and think about little things, little steps that you can do every day to get you to a healthier place. Um, so, you know, and then also a big one is talk to yourself about your body in a positive way. And this is really difficult. It seems easy, but it is very difficult. If you would not say it a good general rule, I like to think about it, if you wouldn't say it to your friend or your family, then don't say it to yourself. And I think we're our worst critic. You know, we see that all the time, whereas you have people that are very fit and, you know, other people might say, man, I would love to look like that. And they're telling us, I hate this X, Y, Z part about my body, or this is, you know, or I'm so fat or my thighs are big or whatever, you know, um, anything like that is a negative comment. Um, so don't shame your body and don't shame other people. So if you're in a group of friends, don't say, oh my gosh, look at her. Why is she wearing that outfit? She shouldn't be wearing that. You know, those kinds of things. Um, we're promoting that negative self-esteem and negative talk because again, you don't know how that's going to impact the people you're talking to. To. Even if that other person can't hear you, you may be t saying something that's going to hit a nerve with your friend and say, well, if she thinks that this person looks this way or thinks this about them, what do they think about me? And so you may be inadvertently contributing to their negative body image by talking about someone else, even if they don't hear it. Um, so that's really important too. And stop comparing yourself to other people. It's just that if, if I could do something in this world and had a superpower, that would be one of mine <laughs> because it just, you know, that is just such a waste of your time. Um, and so, you know, that's just something that isn't going to help you because you're not that person. Um, unless you have an identical twin, <laughs> you know, maybe you can compare yourself <laughs> to physically <laughs> them. But other than that, <laughs> That's not the case. And so um, it can cause negativity to you. It can cause negativity to them. Because um, again, automatically, women especially, because I, you know, and I'm a female, so I hear all this all the time. Guys may have these same conversations, but you may say, oh my gosh, I wish I had your arms. And then the other person might say, they, just to try to make you feel better, then they're going to make a negative comment about them. Well, look at your legs. I wish I had your legs. And so it kind of gets into this big comparison thing that isn't helpful for anyone. And 
And so, um, so it's not a good road to go down. Um, bringing other people up by encouraging body positivity and helping them be positive about themselves, complimenting each other, um, and not ways that are just physical, you know, so, um, but I really think that that can go a long way as well. Just giving compliments. I love your outfit. You look great. You look, you know, whatever. Um, so just trying to be positive, uh, with each other. And then if you have a group of friends, again, don't have everything, uh, focused around what everybody looks like. <laughs> so it can be, man, I love that you wake up every morning and you go run. I think that's awesome. Instead of, you know, I love your outfit today. Yeah. <laughs> so things like that. Um, so the other thing we definitely want to mention, we're talking about body image, but we also don't want to say having a positive body image um, is should not be a crutch for being unhealthy. You know, we want everyone to be healthy. That looks a lot different for different people, but your body fat, whether it's too low or too high, can be a negative health risk for you. And it can put you at a higher risk for diseases in a lot of different ways. So we're not saying, you know, just regardless of where you are, you don't need to work on getting healthier. That's not what we're saying. We want you to love yourself the whole way, um, but also work on being as healthy as you can be. Um, so focusing on being at a healthy weight um, for you, it's something we do endorse and we do measurements and we do look at that. But again, those are data points and whether your weight goes up a little or your body fat goes up a little, we really work with trying to help people understand that that's not necessarily a negative thing, that's data, you know? So, and as everyone knows, whenever you face challenges, that's often when you can make improvements. And so a lot of people have this perfection, you know, you're here and you wanna get here for your body fat percent, um, you know, you're high up here, you wanna go down, and it's not always a straight line down. There's gonna be bumps, there's gonna be things, and those bumps teach you things, you know? And so, um, so those things are good. You know, I love it when I see, you know, think crazy things on people's food diaries so we can talk about them or if their weight maybe, you know, changes a little in a direction that isn't where they want to go. I use those as opportunities to teach people that that's okay. And life isn't perfect. We're not perfect. And so, um, but we do want you to be healthy. And so, um, but while having a body, a positive body image and setting realistic goals for you without dieting, we don't endorse dieting. Um, we endorse healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, just to kind of wrap it up, and I want everyone to grab a pen and a paper and write this down. Please <laughs> be as much of a role model as you can or someone who um, endorses positive body image, especially when you're in an active setting or when it's, you know in a gym or you're, you know that there's people around you that don't possess you know having a positive body image. That is a great opportunity for you to grow in your own confidence in yourself and helping other people do that. Um, it's the gym and you know other places where you know someone's uncomfortable is not a place for you to be like oh my gosh like look at her form that's terrible oh my gosh why did she wear those leggings um, again we're women we don't really know what you men talk about but oh my gosh why is she wearing his shorts are so short you know like, just just be just be aware of what you're saying because it does affect people and you never know what that one comment will do um, you know embrace the sweatpants no makeup style when you go to the grocery store be you be real um, we want you to feel confident here. We want you to feel confident when you're not here um, and, and do whatever you need to do, whether that's take advice that we're telling you, go seek a professional, um, try and find your own coping mechanisms. But there is a light at the other side of the tunnel. And lastly, just give yourself grace. No one feels great about themselves 100% of the time. Keep working on staying positive and loving yourself for who you are. And I think that is a great way to end it. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. And if, I mean, if you're unsure of where to start, we offer free nutrition consults. So you can talk us through kind of where you're at. We can help you set small goals, realistic goals, and help you find your motivation. So Yeah, absolutely. So, well, this has been super fun to talk about because it's just something we see every single day. And if you're struggling with us, you are not alone. And so, um, and again, you know, just giving yourself some grace. But if you're spending a lot of your time being unhappy, because of your appearance, um, then this is a good time to think about that and think about life. And you know, we only have one life, so we don't wanna waste it on focusing on something that maybe is unrealistic or isn't gonna help you get to a healthy place. So thank you, and we are excited to have you with us today. We will see you next time. Thank and, you. Or talk to you next time, <laughs> so for those of you not on YouTube. And um, thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you.